you want to actualize destiny and you want to live a victorious life, you must learn to take responsibility by the Spirit and to contend for high levels of spiritual illumination. Hallelujah. Another angle to this first point is that just because you are enlightened in an area does not cover for the darkness in another area. Every area must be uniquely pursued to get light. You may have light in the area of healing, but it will not bring you prosperity by default. All the various dimensions of your life, you must pay attention to every one of them and to pursue light. Hallelujah. Therein lies the fallacy of short-term success. You can excel in an area and usually results have a way of flattering us because in the presence of results in an area, it is difficult to admit that you are ignorant in another area. After all, you have results. You may be an excellent preacher, but you may be a bad leader. Are we together now? And because of the results that you get in preaching, it will bring you to a point where it will be difficult to admit that you need to have leadership built in you because you judge by the sincerity of your priesthood and you will automatically assume that because I preach and people are blessed, it then means that I'm ex an, a, an exceptional leader. You can be a responsible father in terms of your willingness to help your children, but ignorant of the principles that make you a father indeed. Hallelujah. Dimensional success is dangerous because you will excel in one area and believe that just because of the excellence in that area, there is no need for improvement or development in any other area. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. Very profound scripture. The Bible says, And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet, as he ought to know. Hallelujah. It is important for us to know that for you to excel in life, you must come to terms with the fact that getting light, light that empowers, the knowledge, the information that you need to rise and thrive, you will not be spoon-fed with it. You have to challenge yourself and rise to the occasion. It will take a long time for you to have knowledge. Listen. It took one day for the Holy Spirit to come upon the apostles, but it did not take one day for them to be transformed, to be prepared for that impartation. The ratio of impartation to transformation was three and a half years to one day. There was one day of Pentecost, but there was no one day of lecture. Many years of lecture. Jesus teaching them, helping them, allowing them to ask questions. When they were now prepared, I have taught you here, Koinonia, that the value of the anointing is that it comes upon a vessel that is enlightened and transformed. When you try to bring impartation upon a life and a vessel that rejects enlightenment and rejects transformation, you only wasted that impartation. It will have no profit. Ignorance is not a demon. This finance thing, why is it not working? The devil must be attacking me. I told you that spirits are opportunists. They have found a loophole in your understanding and built a stronghold around it. I can tell you no spirit is as powerful as they look. It is the gap, the space that our ignorance has provided in their life. For as long as the demons find the vessel swept but empty, they will always call their kind and make the, the present state to be worse than the first. When I found this, I made up my mind that anything that does not work in my life, I will not blame anybody. I will take responsibility by God and I will sit down. Remember my teaching um, last week? The first lesson we learned from overcomers is that there are people who take the responsibility to contend for light. How do you know light has come? by the absence of darkness. If darkness is still there, you do not have light enough. The ultimate test for the presence of light is the absence of darkness. Write it down, please. The ultimate test for the presence of light is the absence, the dispelling 
of darkness. Many believers are plagued with the cancer of ignorance. Ignorance about the ways of the kingdom. Ignorance about the laws of the cosmos. I hope you know that this universe was not designed by an intelligent God to just be run with, with, with blind ideas. There are exact laws, spiritual laws, but there are exact natural laws. There are laws. You find this law scattered in biology. You find this law scattered in agriculture. You find this law scattered in engineering. All those today we call scientists are men who have stumbled across the laws that God created to govern the activities of the cosmos. There are laws that control the realm of the spirit, but there are laws that control the earth. For instance, while the earth remaineth, it's not a spiritual law alone. It is a law that applies to all men. Now, there are certain principles that only apply to believers, but there are principles that apply to all men. They are the laws of the universe. My question is, how many of them do you not know? And how many of them are you currently a victim of? Lessons from an overcomer. Ignorance is not a demon. That means everybody has a chance to as quick as your passion can afford you, get out of a realm of ignorance. You must take responsibility and say in the name of Jesus, I am tired of wallowing around this ignorance. You came from a family where no one has risen, no glory, no beauty. I can tell you, for as long as you keep blaming people and hoping like we say in Nigeria, one day go better, that is just a, um, uh, is a wise saying that does not have any biblical basis. It will not work. Time does not change things. Time only reveals. Ignorance is not a demon. The day you begin to take responsibility over your life and over your destiny, obtaining grace and assistance from the Spirit, and you go through the labor of contending for light, you are now subscribing for your exit out of your realm of shame, out of your realm of mediocrity, out of the realm where nothing seems to be working. Behind everything that works is light. Light is the battery that powers everything that works. Behind every great business is an information that the owner of that business knows. Behind every great ministry, I tell you sincerely, there are secrets. Men rise and they stand upon the abundance of the secrets, the mysteries and the principles that they have found. There are laws that govern the anointing. There are laws that govern leadership. There are laws that govern influence. There are laws that govern abundance. There are laws that govern relationships. There are laws that govern restoration. Are we together? There are laws that govern longevity. It is your assignment under God to find these laws by the Spirit. Can I tell you, and I say this with every sense of humility, happy are you when God plants you under a man of God who by sacrifice has distilled these laws and brings it cheaply for you. That is a real, he has brought, um, he has subsidized the price that you have to pay. This is the blessing you get when you come to the house of God. That people have paid the price by the Spirit and through the sacrifice of alignment, the labor of mentorship, the sacrifice of adaptation to get these truths together, distill them and to communicate them with grace. Lessons from an overcomer. There is no overcomer who sits on the throne of glory in ignorance. There is a realm where ignorance is not permitted. The gate will not open. Did you hear what I said? There is a realm where ignorance is not permitted. Even the worst of men in that realm is still sufficiently ignorant or sufficiently knowledgeable. There is a realm where ignorance cannot pass beyond. 
It is up to you to make up your mind right now, listening to me here and across the globe, whether you are ready to remain. Did you know that regardless the prophetic word that comes year after year, regardless what resolutions you make year after year, in ignorance, your lot is already defined. In ignorance, I don't need to be a prophet to reveal what your tomorrow will be. Just show me the abundance of ignorance you have decided to keep. And with the precision of an artist, I can paint your tomorrow. Not by word of knowledge. There are many people who their 10 years will look like today. In fact, worse than today. It is not prophesying doom. It is that the level of emotional attachment they have to ignorance will not allow them rise. They are so attached to ignorance, they dread the discipline of knowledge. Are we learning? Koinonia is quiet. Amen. You came to church. When I find out you are quiet, we will sing. I will get your spirit up and continue what I'm doing. Amen. Is someone learning? So imagine with me that there are two seats here on stage. One seat is for you. You are now seated there. And the other seat is occupied by a very old ancient man who is talking to you, giving you an opportunity to learn. This is what is happening to you today. The name of that man who is seated there is an overcomer. Whether you call him Jesus, whether you call him Paul, whether you call him Abraham, whether you call him whatever it is, there is one name that binds them all. They are overcomers. And they are letting us into their lives and into their scars. And the first lesson that they are teaching us tonight is that ignorance is not a demon. It does not respond to sentiments. It does not respond to all kinds of prejudices. You must be willing and ready to contend for light. High level spiritual illumination is what cures darkness from your life. Lesson number two. Are we learning? What is the second lesson that we learned tonight from an overcomer? You cannot have consistent results until your desires and expectations are defined. You cannot have consistent results until your desires and expectations are defined. You cannot have consistent results until your desires and your expectations are defined. Please underline the word defined. Luke chapter 18, please. From verse 39 to 41. My goodness. Someone is being radically transformed. And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more, the he being blind Bartimeo, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. 40. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. Watch this. And when he was come near, Jesus, your Jesus, the overcomer, asked the man a question. What will thou that I should do for you? I am a compendium of limitless possibilities. But then my response to you will be at the instance of your defining what your desire is. The man said that I may receive my sight. The man would have said that you help to talk to the king for me. That they should be giving me arms every day. Just because you see someone in a state does not mean they are willing to come out of it. Giving definition to your desires will coordinate the power of God to meet you at the point of your need. Lesson number two. You cannot have consistent results until your desires and expectations are defined. Mark eleven twenty four. My goodness, please pay attention to what you are learning now. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire... What things soever ye desire, when you pray on those things, specific things, believe that you receive them 
and thou shalt have them. I will tell you why many people never become successful. I will tell you why many people never actualize great things in life. They have no definition over their desires. They have vague ideas. You ask an average person, what do you want God to do for you? They will say things like maybe general goodness just to show up for me. Or you ask them, what is wrong with you? The first assignment of every doctor is not treatment. is to diagnose what the problem is. And diagnosis can take a long time. Am I right on that? They will need to send you to run a test and the result can show multiple possibilities. Then they subject you to a more intricate test. The joy of the doctor is that he finally zooms down. People begin to rejoice over diagnosis, not just treatments. They are finally happy that we've known the name. The moment it has a name, you begin, your, your chances are high that you will be healed and you will survive when that sickness has a name. You ask any medical practitioner, the worst state any doctor can be in is trying to treat a patient whose condition has no definition. That is true for medicine. It is also true for your life. What kind of believer do you want to become? I just want to love God. That is vague. I just want to be great. That is vague. I hate poverty. That is still vague. I want to be rich. That is vague. I want to be a big man. Very vague. Ignorantly vague. Because a big man is, is a statement that was not even introduced by big men. Hallelujah. Are we together? You cannot have consistent results until your desires and expectations are defined. Giving definition to your desires is a miracle. I can tell you this. It is in this area that both religion and science and psychology, they come together. They all agree that your life will revolve greater when there is definition to your expectations. What do you desire? That I may receive my sight. When your desires are defined, you will know when the goals have been achieved. Hallelujah. Lord, bring increase. Lord, bring increase. What does that mean? How do you know your prayer has been answered? Lord, take away shame from my life. By what definition will you know shame has left? How do you know God has answered you? And how do you know the devil is stopping the prayer? Lord, let my destiny help us send for me. That is wonderful. But what is the definition? Now, we pray generally, and you hear me prophesy generally, but when it has to do with the life of a victorious one, an overcomer. Ladies and gentlemen, there needs to be definition in your life. Most believers want to succeed, but they are totally at a loss as to what success is and the indices that they will use to measure success. I have helped you in this house and I will help you again that when you talk about success, there are about seven areas that if you do not excel in, you are not successful. Can I do a one minute recap for you? Number one, very quickly, please write it down. We are still on point two. Number one, your spiritual growth. The first area that you measure success in, you want to make progress, you want to advance, number one is your spiritual growth. Number two, mental transformation. You are successful to the degree to which you now adopt superior belief systems that translate towards a winning and a victorious life. I refer you to my message, the victor's mentality. The mentality of a victor. The second area that we measure success is in the area of your mental transformation. There is nothing called a billionaire madman, no. You give a madman one billion, you did not help him. He's not even aware because he's not in a mental state that is fine and healthy. Number three, the third area to measure success is in the area of purpose. And of course, you can call it your ambition, your career, whatever it is. Purpose and your ambition. That which you desire to do as far as life and destiny is concerned. Can I continue? The fourth area to measure success is your health and wellness. You are only successful in the kingdom to the degree to which 
you are healthy and you are well. Your physical agility and your wellness is a very, very potent index for measuring success. I'm teaching you this so that when you say, Lord, I desire to be successful, you understand the areas. Are you seeing that now? Your mind can cooperate with your prayer so that you can get answers and you will know God has answered you. Your spiritual growth and advancement, mental transformation, purpose and destiny, health and wellness. Number five, your financial well-being. Usually this is where most people zoom down to. When they are talking about success, they are really talking about money. Financial well-being. It is true that in all your being successful, if you lag in this area, you are not wholesomely, you are not entirely successful. Number six, relationships. The sixth area that measures and defines your being successful is the quality of the relationships that you have and you enjoy in your life. You are as secured from an earth standpoint as the relationships that you have. Let me repeat myself again. From an earth standpoint, you are as secured as the relationships that you have. Number seven. The seventh area that measures success generally is fulfillment. Fulfillment and meaning. Meaning. M-E-A-N-I-N-G. Meaning. The area of fulfillment and meaning. That you want to ensure that your life counts. You want to be satisfied knowing that you are serving God and that you are becoming a blessing to humanity. You cannot have consistent results until your desires and expectations are defined. Watch this. If you have your roof leaking in your house, do you know sometimes the leakage can start from one point? Or let me use a plumbing issue. Let's say you have, you know, a leakage from your pipe. The water can flow, say, from your living room or from the toilet, the bathroom, and then it flows down to the bedroom. It may even flow to other areas in, in, in you know, maybe even to your living room. But when you are solving the problem, you, it's not where the water is. You have to go back and find out where is the point from where that leakage started. Is the longevity of that leakage that caused that damage to even reach your living room. Do you understand what I'm teaching you? So you have to go past the living room and then you finally, you get to the point where you say, ah, so it's from maybe the toilet or the sink and then you start to fix it there. When you fix that one, you can clean up the water that is there and you know you have done a good job. But when you leave the part that is still leaking and try to mop up the water in the living room, you only wasted your time. Am I right on that? There are many, many people who are just trying to mop up problems, bringing temporal solutions. They have not yet brought definition to their desires. There are believers who want empowerment from God but they do not have a clear definition. We think in pictures. That is the reason why you hear a lot of people will tell you that they have images that represent their future. Images. Now, when that is done within the limit of scripture, that is fine. Are we together? Now you understand why the Lord granted me that instruction to get the map of Abuja, get the map of Nigeria, Get the map of Africa and get the map of the globe. Why will God ask me to do that? I'm in a season of intense prayer, praying for the next level of koinonia. And God does not even start revealing to me where we will be meeting. He just says, you go and get the map. No wonder he told Abraham, he said, come out, count the stars. I want, you are asking me to bless you, but there is vagueness. There is no definition. I need to help your imagination so that I can release for you. So you can understand what I have in store. He said, count the stars. And he began to count and he was lost. And he said, so shall thy seed be. Finally, verse 6, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. There are things God wants to do. This is why, Ba, my dear people, Believe in the power of dreams and visions. It is God's way of helping to prepare your mind. You see, when you have seen something and you've held it in your imagination, it becomes difficult for the devil to steal it from you. 
So a young lady who just comes for koinonia receives a prophetic word from a poor and a mediocre family. She goes back home and here's the spirit of grace. You sit down and you see yourself standing in a place, in a crusade ground, ministering for instance, or running an NGO, a multinational NGO, blessing people, and you wake up. I'm still in that room. I'm still on the ground. You are not there. You've left that place. It's just that you are not aware. You don't know the power. Listen, I'm not just playing with your mind. No, that you were able to receive that, you are not in that condition again. I'm telling you this. It's just that it will take time for your body to get where your mind has gotten to. But I can tell you at that instant that you received it, the moment Mary said, be it unto me, according to your word, she became pregnant. Hallelujah. Those consultants who teach people how to plan, they usually teach people, for instance, in the area of finances. When they want to help you, they will say, go and calculate. How much does it take to run your family per week? And you will see the person who is praying and crying and shouting, saying, I don't know. How much is your chance, Kufi? The last time I know, I think it's around 70 or 80, around that. And you cannot rise that way. How much is your rent? I don't know. How much is your transportation? I don't know. God help me and God said, what do you want me to do for you now? How can I touch a destiny helper to help you? That is the reason why if God gives such a person one million, two million, he will rejoice and roll on the ground even if here and in two weeks he's back to his, or his former self again. Because there was no definition of desires. There will always be wastage of opportunities when there are no definitions to your desire. Hallelujah. I truly believe, watch this, that part of the reason why Joseph excelled was because he prepared. He knew that based on the law of time and chance, one day I will stand before the king. It may take long. There is no guarantee. No date was given to me. And I'm saying this prophetically to someone. Do you know you are closer to meeting your helpers? Are you prepared? Have you imagined yourself in the boardroom? Or do you want until the day God now opens the door, you now disgrace yourself and your destiny as a result of lack of definition? Many years ago, let me tell you, many years ago, a younger, much younger version of myself back in our family house in Joss, I used to go to our boys' quarters in the night. You've heard my story. I will carry a mic, a stick now representing a mic, and I will be shouting at the back of that house, preaching alone. I never knew that my mom once peeped at me and she saw me doing it once. And I will sense the power of God. I'm preaching. That's koinonia there in the bush. It's true. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Let me sincerely admit to you, if you do not have a definition for your desires, it will never come to pass. I hate to be a bearer of bad news. Oh, I'm going to be a great man of God. Do you have individuals that represent where you are getting to? Oh, I'll be greater than anybody. Be like them first, then you can be greater than them. Some of these foolish and blind strategies that people bring is the reason why they don't rise. They will tell you, I'm going to be greater than, have an idea. I'm going to be a great crusade person. There are a few people that can be a starting point, priming your creativity. Reinhard Bonke is there of blessed memory. Billy Graham is there of blessed memory. At every level, there is someone who can relate to your desires. Lessons from an overcomer. Are we learning? You must give definition to your desire. You will see someone who is in a one room, but he has already given an architect, an architect friend. He says, help me draw a three bedroom flat. And the man said, well, I will draw it all, but I know you are wasting your time. No. And he will draw it and write it there. Or some persons will spell their goals in the name of Jesus by the end of 2023. I should be worth at least 10 million naira. May not be too much at whatever level. Someone may laugh at you and say, just that, no problem. Allow them. You just keep dreaming with God. 
in the name of Jesus as a man of God, I should have the privilege at the end of the year, I should be serving his grace to these people and this region. Planning is powerful and there is no planning without deploying your imagination. Listen, I want you to respect what you are hearing. Believe me, even from an intellectual standpoint, you will not hear what you are hearing without paying a price. I assure you on this. Ask any consultant and any intelligent person, what you are hearing for free is what people will pay tens of thousands of dollars to travel for seminars to listen to. I pray and hope that you respect it. Lesson number two from an overcomer is that when there is no definition to your desires, there is no sustainable success. Let's rush. Are we learning? Lesson number three. Are you ready? People are not really affected by what happens to them. Listen and then you write. People are not really affected by what happens to them. They are affected by the meaning they give what happens to them. It is not what happens to people that affects them. It is the definition and the meaning they give what affects what happens to them that causes the pain and the despair. Let me say it again and then I will, I, will, I will dictate it for you to write. People are not really affected by what happens to them. They are affected by the meaning and the definitions and also the interpretations that they tie to what happens to them. Please look up. Don't worry, you will write. What is the difference between falling in church and falling in a restaurant? Young lady, as I'm teaching right now, if the power of God carries you up and lands you down, you get up rejoicing. And even your seat may say, my God, he has visited you. Versus you fall down in a restaurant. You fell down. You, the worst fall may even be here. What is the difference? It's not the falling down. It's the meaning that you attach to that experience. That's what causes depression. That's what causes joy. It is never what happens to you that has that power to destroy you. You have associated happenings around your life and you have connected them to certain meanings. There are events that mean failure to you. There are events that mean weakness to you. There are events that mean oppression to you. What is making someone cry is another person's desire. Someone will cry and say, I got only one million. Is a meaning you connected to it. That based on your level, one million is a testimony of a failure. Whereas for someone, that one million, he would talk about it as though, I mean, he just got to heaven. Now you write, please. People are not affected by what happens to them. They are affected by the meaning they connect to the happenings. People are not really affected by what happens to them. They are affected by the meaning that they connect to those happenings. This is the reason why comfort and counseling is powerful. What happens when you are comforted? What happens when you are being counseled? Your perceptions are being changed, that's all. The situation is not being solved necessarily. It is your perception. For instance, if you lose a loved one because of the pain, or let's, let me use something more, more bearable. You lose a job and you get angry and angry and someone sits with you down and says, do you know, perhaps the Bible says all things work together for good. Is that true? Watch what is happening to you now. The person says, I know the story of someone who lost a job and did not know it was a springboard to the next level. At the end of it, the person who was crying 10 minutes ago is now suddenly rejoicing. Did you give the person a job? No, you change the meaning associated to that situation. Can I tell you, when you learn this principle, you can laugh through storms. What happens when you make a video and you have only two likes or two follows? Why do you cry? Abba, all of this, can you imagine? I suffered to preach this message and only two people. Are you sure it was only two people? What if the first click was a congregation listening to you? But you have, there is a meaning.
People are not really affected by what happens. I assure you. Why do you hate to let people know that your father, with all due respect, maybe is some person doing some menial job and you lie and call him your uncle? No, that's my uncle. My real father is abroad. Why are you telling that lie? It's not necessarily because you're a bad person. There is a meaning. You feel that when you reveal the true status of your father in that lowly estate, it may affect people's perception about your self-worth and you will lose your sense of significance. That means a secured believer is one who redefines the meaning that you have associated to many things and with many things in your life. Hallelujah. Are you learning? It is truly not what happens to you that destroys you. I mean, you just called me Joshua Selman, not Apostle Josh. Do you know who I am? What is the meaning of that? Perhaps, maybe from that culture, they feel it's okay to just say Joshua Selman. And you have said me. You will soon know now that God called me. All that complaint is simply because apostle was missing? No. It is a meaning you have connected to it. There are people who are so insecure that even if it's a little child that taps your leg and says, uncle, they will slap him because they are used to respect. How dare you tap my feet, this little boy? And they slap the boy and say, you don't know who I am. Why will a man pound on his wife, slapping her and saying, do you know I'm older than you? It should be obvious. Why would the woman revenge back and say, you, you, will, you, will, you will stay without food this night? And all that drama is happening. Do you know at the end of it is simply that there is a, an oscillation. They are stinging their ego and simply because of the meaning. Meaning. Lessons from an overcomer. Number three. We are not really affected by what happens to us. It is the definition and the meaning that we associate. So because of this, meaning and definitions, another word for it is called ego. Ego is an industry. There are businesses that are literally built out of this deficiency in men. Are we together? Yes. If you watch me and I come down from a car, and it's a nice Jeep or some Lincoln Navigator or something. Like, That's right. But if I come out from maybe a Gulf or somewhere, you'll now say, no, 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 no. Now, it's, this should not be. There are people who stand behind aircrafts. They have never entered and may never enter soon. And snap in front of it. And just say, to God be the glory, I just arrived. Why? No, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. All right? But why do we go through this pressure? Why do we go through all of those kinds of things? That house you see is my own. In fact, uh, I don't want to say much. And then we wrap up everything and just say to God be the glory. But the truth is that we hope that by some meaning, even if it is by falsehood, we will earn respect. Are we together? People will believe that, oh, we are serious people. Maybe we are wealthy and so on and so forth. Can I tell you? When you learn to give things proper meanings, offense will be minimized in your life. The direct consequence of violating this principle is that you will live a life in unnecessary pain and offense. Someone can be looking at you and thinking about his rent and you will think the person is eyeing you. I've noticed that this person is eyeing me and honestly, the person is just, you know you can be looking at someone and you are not there. The person is thinking of what explanation he will give the landlord and you are there misunderstanding the person and looking at the person through the lens of your insecurity. Can we do number four? Number four. What lesson do we have to learn tonight from an overcomer? Is someone becoming wiser? Are you ready for number four? <laughs> All right, so let's go. You need encouragement slash motivation to start anything, but it takes discipline and endurance to be consistent. You need encouragement slash motivation to start anything, when you're about starting anything, what you need is encouragement and motivation. 
but it will take discipline and endurance to be consistent in life the secret to starting is motivating motivation but the secret to remaining and to be consistent is discipline and endurance discipline and endurance you need encouragement and motivation to start anything a business a ministry a home you just need encouragement but everyone who has stayed in any field of success will tell you that you get to a point where you need beyond motivation it will take discipline and it will take endurance and talking about discipline there are two dimensions to discipline number one there is the staying power is called discipline number two there is the ability the power of restraint you need both you are not disciplined if you do not have number one the staying power the ability to continue even if alone and then number two the ability to say no to many good things you need encouragement and motivation to start anything in life but it will take discipline and endurance believers please listen to me this is a very profound point most people think that those who today we call overcomers champions in the spirit and in destiny that it was motivation that took them all through i i disagree totally go and ask any champion in any field there are times that the kind of challenges you have before you motivation will not solve it you need the staying power to continue even if you do not know the name of what you are doing motivate me to get to lagos you can encourage me when i start say by road by the time i am seven hours don't motivate me you are wasting your time Pray for me for the staying power to remain in that car till I arrive. Are we together? We have a world that is so in need of motivation. And motivation is important, don't get me wrong. It helps to prime you to start. But there are times you will need to stay alone and say, though he slay me, I will still trust him. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15. Many people lack the staying power. It says, and so... After he, the he being Abraham, had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Abraham did not just obtain the promise because God said he would. It took patience, it took endurance. Can I tell you the truth? For some of you, by reason of what I'm saying, God is telling you, go back to what you were doing. It is still my will. Stay there. It will not magically, you know, we have this idea that because you are in the will of God, the results will happen overnight. No, sir. There are times you will cry, you are still in the will of God. There are times it will not make sense, you are still in the will of God. This stubborn child, was it a cost to get you? He's still a pastor, train him. Endure, endure, endure. Hallelujah. <laughs> Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Pasca Nakata Branda Catecos, Cate Branda Catapa Cotosco to break a take and look at her. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.